we can get into how we actually update this client. Obviously, when we create the client, we create it with an initial root of trust. Let's say, you know, I just give chain A, you know, block 50 of chain B, and, and that's the initial root of trust that chain A uses. Um, but, you know, I want to prove something on, on block 100. You know, I need to keep the light client in sync as we move forward so I can keep proving new things about what's happening on chain B. Um, so to do that, we have relayers that can submit update clients. Um, and we can look at what that looks like at the, at the most generic level and then go down to what it looks like for Tenement. Um, if we look here, we call update client uh, with a header. And this header uh, at, um, at the most generic level doesn't really contain much information. It just contains, let me find it. Yeah, so the header just creates a client type and a height and a way to validate basic. So all of the um, client specific logic isn't actually stored in O2 client. Um, which can process any type of client type. It's actually done inside the individual client implementations like Tenorment or Solo Machine. Um, so we can look into how we update in, um, in 07 Tenorment. Uh, first, we can take a look at the header, which is what the relayers will submit. Uh, Probably looking at the proto definition will be easier. Okay, so the header that we submit to an IBC light client contains a tenement signed header, um, the full validator set, a trusted height, and trusted validators. Um, so the signed header is probably what you're most used to if you know what um, how like clients off chain work. Um, this is just a header, like a, a header and a commit that chain B has created. Um, so it might be block 100, and it'll have the header information, the root hash, the next validator hash, all that good stuff, and a commit, which is a two thirds signature of all the validators over that header. Um, and then we pass in the, yeah, the validator set that actually signed this header because the header itself will just contain a hash of this, of this validator set. And a height that we are using as our basis of trust to verify this new header and those trusted and the validators that, associ that are associated with that, uh, with that height. Um, so if you look at what's actually stored on IBC, as I showed you um, over here, the consensus state only contains the hash of the validator set. Um, we don't actually store the whole validator set. So if you want to update from height 50 to height 70 or something like that, you want to prove that the validators at height 50, at least two thirds of them signed the header at height 70, right? Um, that's in keeping with the with the tenement security model. We make sure that you know at least two thirds are honest, and so you know if two thirds of the header that we already have signed this new header that we have, then we can we can accept this new header um, into our client. Does that make sense? Okay. So how do we do that if we just have a hash? Well, as I said, the, the relayer themselves gives us the entire trusted validator set because we don't want to store that in the state machine itself. Um, so if you look at update.go, this is where all of the update logic happens. And a lot of additional stuff is happening here, but let me just show you probably the most important parts uh, to see. Um, so the first thing we do is we get you know, the consensus state that we're proving the new header off of. So we get the consensus state from the trusted height that we got passed. You know, that has to be a consensus state that we already have, right? Because we're taking a past consensus state that we have and already trust and trying to prove an unproven header that we're trying to incorporate into our client. So we get that consensus state. Um, and let's see here. 
that's a lot of just pruning logic, blah, blah, blah. We check that the trusted header, uh, that the validators that we got from the header are actually hashed to um, you know, the next validators hash that we have in our trusted consensus state. So this is where you know, the validator set that the, that the relayers gave us, the trusted validators, we make sure that they hash to you know, the, the consensus state that we already have. Um, and then we, we uh, let's see over here, then we take this signed header, um, take our trusted validators and make sure that they've signed uh, the new header that we have with at least you know, the trust level that we've passed in, which hopefully is you know, one third or two thirds or one, depending on how secure we want our system. Does that make sense as a way to prove the new header that we have? This is how tenement light clients work off chain as well. What we've done here is to kind of strip out as much of the header from the consensus state as possible to just store the minimum amount of information that we need to prove the next header. Yeah. Are there any questions? And, and the root hash, the root, did you, do you use it uh, in, in this process? Uh, no, it is a good question. It is not used at all in the updates. All that's used is the next validators hash, um, the timestamp to make sure that, you know, not too much time has passed in between updates and, you know, certain parameters inside the client state, like how much do you allow the clock to drift? What is your trusting period? What is your trust level? Things like that. Um, so those are kind of parameters that relayers can set when they create their clients that change, you know, how, how secure the light client is and how flexible it is. Okay. So then if your validator set changed, be, uh, when you do yeah. this update, what, yes. what happened? Uh... So, yeah. So at each update, we have to update the consensus state, right? So um, first we have to prove that the header is valid in the first place. That's, that's, what's this, that's what's happening here, right? We prove that the validator, that the header is valid. Um, and then we update by creating a new consensus state for this height um, with the timestamp of the header a new root, and then that header's next validator hash. If the header uh, validator set has changed, um, that's fine, but there needs to be at least a two thirds intersection or at least a trust levels worth of intersection because uh, this is a, a variable that we can put. So there needs to be that level of intersection between the two validator sets. And on chain, we only store the hashes, but as part of this message, the relayer has to give us the entire validator set, um, which we then check against the hashes. So during the message execution, we have the entire validator set and we make sure actually this, this tenement call makes sure that, the, that there's a, the right amount of overlap between, between the two validator sets. Okay. And, and, and the root, is it updated? Uh... Yes, because each header will have a new root. And when we update, uh, we, we get the, the new app hash and put that as a root. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what this is doing is creating a new consensus state for that header's height, right? So in the example I said, we're updating from height 50 to height 70. That means at height 50, we have one particular consensus state, right? And when we get the header for height for 70, we're going to get the, the actual you know, tenement header for 70 the, with, along with the commit. We're going to get the validator for, set for height 70, um, or the full validator set for height 70, because as I mentioned, the header itself only contains the hashes. Um, we're going to get, and then we're going to get the full validator set for height 50, because we only have the hash on our, on our state machine. Um, and so what we do is we make sure, first of all, that the, the trusted validator set at height 50 hashes to the, the next validator's hash at our consensus state at 50. We make sure that the validator set at 70 actually hashes to the val set hash that we have inside our, the header that we got. And then we make sure that there's this overlap between the trusted validator set and the validator set. Um, and then once all that is done, we create a new consensus state for the 70th header and we store it under a new 
under a new path. So when all is said and done, we actually will have, we'll still have the consensus state for height 50, but we'll also have a consensus state for height 70. Um, so we're not replacing consensus states, we're adding consensus states into our light client. And this is stored on chain, right? The consensus state. Yeah, the consensus state stored on chain. And that's why we make them as, as small as we can. Um, mm -hmm. Initially, when we were first implementing this, we stored the entire validator set. Um, and this made the header the header that relayer for submitting easier because you don't have to pass in the trust validator set. You already have it. But um, that that was you know, we realized that was a wrong, wrong trade-off. You know, we want to make sure that the state on on chain is small, and we're fine with relayers having to create like a bigger message. Um, and so we we get that bigger message from the relayers, and then discard um, all the useless data once we once we create this consensus state. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? People have. I have a quick question about the height type, actually. So the height type has a revision height and a revision number. <clears throat> yes. I was wondering what exactly the revision number is. Is that like something after like a chain upgrade or? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So um, when we were implementing this, uh, there was no ability for Tenement to upgrade as in stop the chain and you know start a completely new chain with the same state. And keep the height, uh, you know, keep the keep the block height uh, continuing, continuing, you know, right. So if you upgraded uh, the Cosmos Hub, typically what we did was we would take Cosmos Hub dash three, and it would be at height ten thousand, and we would export state, you know, import it into a new blockchain, and it, that would start at Cosmos Hub dash four height one, right. And we didn't, you know, if when chains were upgrading, we wanted to keep the light client alive because, you know, there are connections built on top of these things, channels built on top of these things. And if every time an upgrade happened, we had to create a completely new stack of new connections and new channels, that would have been infeasible. So we wanted to make sure that the client survived across chain upgrades. Um, and so the way we did that was to make sure that um, even after a height upgrade, we still saw the height as being monotonically increasing. Um, so that's why we we yeah we take that that number at the end of a chain ID and interpret that as a um, revision number at least for tenement chains. That's what we do. The tenement light client does this um, on IBC, um, and so a header at four one at height four one will be considered higher than a header at causes hub dash three height 10,000. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, cool. You know, pretty close to before we deploy this, um, the tenement actually had the ability to start from a non-zero height. Um, so we can now like just keep it at causes hub dash four and just bump the height when we start a new chain. But, you know, other, other applications, particularly, potentially and other blockchain implementations may not be able to do this. So we still have kept um, that logic in place. Any other questions on updating? So now, you know, the relayers are chugging along, we're creating new consensus states um, that can track whichever height that we want as Chain B is producing blocks. Our light client on chain is getting updated and keeping in sync with what's happening on chain B. Cool. Uh, so um, one question. Uh, and the relayers should update the client um, for every block or? Great or... question. Um, so it depends on the trust level. Uh, so we can do, so tenement light clients, you can choose between what's called a sequential light client and a bisecting light client. And so sequential light clients means you have to update every single block, right? So it's an actual thing. Bisecting means that you can kind of skip blocks um, so long as the, the validator sets between these blocks don't diverge too much. Um, and that's what's encoded in this trust level. That's what you can choose when you're creating a client. If you choose one, trust level of one, 
That means I will only accept a new header if every validator set of my trusted set signed this new header. And in general, that'll only be true if in a sequential, in the sequential case when you're updating block by block, right? Um, if you have, you know, two thirds, right, saying I'm willing to accept a header, a new header, if at least two thirds of a validator I know and trust have signed this new untrusted header. Um, that's, that's the default behavior of, of uh, clients now um, on IBC. And that allows relayers to submit these messages less frequently and it allows for less on-chain state on chain A on a particular chain because you're not you're not storing the consensus state for every single header. Um, you can do it like once a day or whenever you you need. I mean, I think right now what we do is whenever a packet needs to get sent, we we send an update client along with it uh, to approve that packet, uh, which has worked pretty well for for all live channels. Um, and if you don't send the update client, um, yeah, for whatever reason, uh, and you send the send packet, uh, then then basically the blockchain will reject that, and the packet will time out uh, on the sending blockchain, right? Uh, well, it's kind of two things. So um, if you happen to not send, an, and so what I said about the doing it in in doing them together. Um, the reason relayers do that is because they can query the proof of a packet at height 92 and then send an update client for height 92 in the same message. And then, you know, the client will have height 92 and then you can prove that the packet was included in height 92 and everything's good, right? That's a different case than just saying, you know, I mean, but if, but if height 92 already existed on, on the chain, then you don't need to send this update client. Um, there's no need to do that. Um, because the proof will, will work because we actually have that consensus state already. Um, but let's say we never send an update, right? We just, uh, the relayers take too long and they do it too infrequently. Um, there will be a time when the client expires um, and that's based on the trusting period you pass in. And the reason for that is it's for the term and security model, which I won't get into, but um, Basically, you know, you pass in this trusting period, which has to be some number less than the unbonding period. So if the unbonding period on chain B is four weeks, let's say this trusting period is two weeks, I have to send an update to this client within two weeks. If I don't, the client will expire and then no header, no new headers will be able to be verified against this. Um, you know, because that's not very good UX, we have we have a workaround where you can submit a governance proposal and get around it. But you know, um, that's kind of a special case that I'm not going to get into uh, today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.